Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for those people who happen to be dealing with Libran narcissists. Now this can be the sun in Libra or moon in Libra in particular. And somebody made a good comment. They said, you know, I think the moon in that particular sign is even more so the case. And I, I think they might be right, but the sun can definitely give some of the same personality traits. So get this out of the, I'm going to get this out of the way. Um, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not playing one on YouTube, not diagnosing anyone using labels because that's what we have to work with. And so if any of you out there are trained in the mental health uh, field, because I've had people, oh, well, that's not a true narcissist. It's a problem personality, but some people don't really um, know what narcissistic um, abuse is all about in the first place. And they think that narcissists are simply somebody who brags all the time and is self-absorbed. If only that were the case. That would be annoying, but that is simply not the case. We're talking about something much more sinister at play here. We're talking about people who need to feed off of others. They're energy vampires in one uh, form or another. Sometimes they're looking to be boosted up in the in the um, covert narc variety. With malignant narcs, they want to bring down the vibes of other people because um, that is something that they feed upon. Um, you know, misery loves company. Ever heard of that? It's something along those lines, but they feed on negativity. And so they're always trying to create chaos in other people's lives and confusion and everything like that. And they do a good job of it. They're very talented in that way. <laughs> uh, drama, if you will. So um, there are different, you know, there are different types of narcissists, but the bottom line is, is that they need attention as well. They need to be kind of like the, the center of attention, but they may ghost a person too. That's what's so crazy making about it. They want you to be, you know, uh, the central focus or they want uh, you to have them as their central focus, but then they can ghost you, go with somebody else. And when you get your life together, come back to you. And they know just that moment uh, when to do it. So the, you know, they're like, so some narcs are not necessarily malignant, uh, which is the, what I call the, the mean ones. Um, you know, I didn't make up that term, but you know, that's how I, I view them as mean, but the malignant narcs are the ones who undercut you, try to, try to lower your self-esteem and they can do that in, you know, very obvious ways or some subtle ways. And I was, you know, before I, w I set to do this, I was set to do the, the Libra narcissist reading. I was like, ooh, I don't know if this is going to work because I've had my dealings with Libra people and typically I don't see them as narcissistic. But one of the things about narcissism is the need for control. And this is coming from a place, it doesn't matter what sign they are, of trauma. Um, we can think of childhood abuse of one type or the other. We can think, and that obviously creates a child who is not only deprived of love uh, in a lot of cases, but is also uh, feeling that sense of if it was some form of abuse, also the trauma associated with that. So there might be, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, verbal abuse, and that in and of itself is traumatic. But then on top of that, the feeling of not being loved, which is underlying all of those types of abuse. In the case of um, the, the other, uh, the, what I wanted to say too, is that there can also be the type of abuse that is come or uh, tra trauma that comes from a, what we would call like a traumatic event, like an accident, a uh, being, you know, in a, a violent situation uh, where there was a crime, 
a violent crime that took place, you know, something that's very dramatic and, you know, scares the child and creates that sense of, you know, you can't trust the world. The world is an unsafe place. When people have those experiences, they become very controlling because they're trying to control their environment. They, they don't want that to ever happen again. And so the problem is that, well, I mean, you can't control life. We can, we can really direct our lives a lot more than we think we can a lot of times, I feel. But on top of that, I also think that we can... Um, experience a lot of um, frustrations when we try to control other people. And of course, if you're control, trying to control your life, people are in it and you're going, you know, it's going to happen. And I shouldn't say you because you're probably listening for somebody else, but some people are listening for themselves. Uh, they've already admitted that. Um, but anyway, um, so I didn't see Libra as problematic in all of my dealings with Libra, but now I can see very clearly a particular situation. And remember that you can have a Libra sun and you can have any moon sign. So you could have Scorpio moon and have a lot of those traits that I've already outlined with um, a narc moon Scorpio. Even the rising sign, I feel, can um, play into this and how the person tries to control. Um, but I, I'm not including that because I feel, I feel very strongly that the sun and moon are enough. Now, one way that people try to control is with money. And I feel like Libra is a sign that can be good at generating money because they like nice things. So they're going to tend to, and they tend to be very intelligent and attractive, like physically appealing and have the gracious manners. So in that sense, um, a Libra person can use their money to control people around them. And this is something that if you're dealing with a narcissist, be it a parent or a spouse, it can be a friend, but usually we don't have those, uh, you know, very intimate relationships with friends where they affect our lives that uh, deeply. But, you know, obviously, if you have a very close friend who happens to be a narc, then that would also apply. But also like a boss, because a boss can be responsible for your livelihood. So, you know, a narc boss, um, trying to dangle the carrot of money to control people is a common narc trait, and Libra would be no exception to that. One thing that Librans are known for is their charm. Libra is ruled by Venus, and Venus is the goddess of love and beauty. Librans tend to be capable of um, coming across very agreeably and being very polite. You know how they say you, you can catch more flies with honey? Well, that's what I'm talking about here. Now, what is dangerous is that if the Libra person is severely damaged psychologically, they can be that sociopath that comes on like smooth, smooth as silk, and they are really this very dangerous person. So obviously I'm talking about an extreme example, but they do exist. So um, I'm going to just say this now in case I forget later, because uh, I, I usually I talk about the, the uh, symptoms or, or the, the, the traits, and then I talk about how to deal with them. But I'll say this right off the bat. If you're dealing, if you're, uh, if this is like a love relationship and, or, you know, you're dating somebody and they're acting like the perfect person all the time, and they seem to be trying to impress you, like they're sending flowers and they're doing, they're love bombing you is what they call it. And then they might even like try to push you to get involved very quickly. That is a huge red flag because they want you. It's like, what's the rush? Well, they want you in their clutches is the, the most likely scenario. And even if they look good, they may not be good. And I mean, they're, you know, they're part of God's family and, and they are, you know, 
a child of God. So they're good inherently somewhere inside, but you know, people who are very broken can do a lot of damage. So be very careful when you're dating somebody and they're exhibiting signs of, you know, doing things very, wanting to do a rush job on the relationship. Another thing, um, well, I mean, those were the traits that, um, I wanted to get out of the way. I've, uh, put down some other things related to Libra and narcissism. The first thing I said is obsess, uh, obsession with appearance. Now, um, This is something that is kind of complicated because you might say, well, just because somebody's obsessed with their appearance, what does it have to do with narcissism? First of all, when people are obsessed with their appearance, um, they can show traits of having a hard time, you know, thinking about other things. So it's, it's very much, um, shutting out other people, paying too much attention to this area of life. Um, Again, you know, what kind of traits go along with obsession of appearance? Eating disorders, uh, plastic surgery, addiction, um, clothes shopping, being so absorbed in the surface that they cannot give of themselves otherwise. And really, a lot of times, these people are doing this because they feel bad about themselves inside. That was the other thing about narcissism is that we have to understand is that um, these are people that have a lot of self-loathing. And in order to, they want to get rid of that. So one way of doing that is by being mean to other people. They're projecting their own self-hatred onto somebody else and hating that person and acting like that person's a loser. I mean, I even hate that word. I don't even like to say that word because it's so untrue. I mean, nobody is a loser. Nobody, everyone has gifts in life. And anyone who tries to make another person feel like they are um, not worthy is a dangerous person, in my opinion. They're dangerous to our well-being. And so um, trying to, you know, get away from people who don't have a high opinion of you is something that um, may be called for in certain circumstances because it can really wreak havoc on one's life. I mean, yes, you know, it's not as dramatic as getting hit or something like that but it still can leave quite a mark. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. When somebody is obsessed with their appearance, you might not think that they're hurting you, but by their own, let's say they have children. Let's say, I don't want to pick on women because I'm a woman, but women can have a tendency to do this more than men because women, even in 2020 are expected to, um, or, you know, we think that we're expected to look a certain way. And especially when you're younger, you know, this is something that when you don't really feel comfortable in your own skin, when, when you may have been teased about your parents, you know, a Libra person who gets teased about their parents can be especially prone to trauma about it because of the Venus in influence. You know, um, beauty is very important to a Libra person in general, not just with their own appearance, with maybe other people's appearance, maybe with, um, you know, their immediate environment that they want an environment that looks good. And when they don't have that, it makes them feel imbalanced. And remember that Libra is a symbol of the scale. So it's all about balance. So a Libra narcissist who is obsessed with their appearance, let's say it's a mother and she's imparting these values on her daughter and her daughter may grow up to think that she has to be beautiful. Actually, if um, the Libra narc has a moon in Libra, they may um, 
they may have had a mother who somehow gave them messages about appearance that were maybe not healthy. Maybe like the mother was like that as well. And and this goes to the idea of being a love addict, being too dependent on relationships. This is the point in the video where I say to you that um, the, these videos on narcissism are not meant to imply that all people of each sign have these qualities, that they are all narcissists or that they all have these qualities. These are going to be more of the challenging aspects of a particular sign. And it's not to just <laughs> broad brush and say everybody who, who, um, everybody's going to be like that. And I thought that would be fairly obvious since I've titled this Libra Narcissist, but I still get people, you know, thinking that I'm talking about all people of that sign. So being too dependent on a relationship, I'm going to take another extreme example, which I hear about on the news, which is really tragic. Um, we hear about w women, again, this is not to, to, to pick on women uh, whatsoever, but this particular example seems to, to um, be happening to women because, you know, if a woman has a child, the onus is usually on her to take care of the child. And um, sometimes women, because they want to keep a man, they will allow a man to abuse their child. Um, now, this is certainly not going to be only for Libra people, but I'm talking about a certain trait that is commonplace in Libra of relationships, because Libra rules the house of relationships, the seventh house. So for broken people, who have been traumatized earlier in life and who are starving for love. Finding th these types of people may not be very choosy in a companion. And they can choose a companion who can do terrible things to their children. They may trust this person to take care of their child. As long as that, ch as that person stays with them, that's all that, that matters. And then that, that other person, you know, does terrible things to the child. And it's, it's horrifying, but I, you know what? I feel sorry for that mother because I know that she was severely traumatized herself. I know it. I know that a mother, the normal instinct is to protect your child. And so I feel sorry for, I, f I feel sorry for people who do, who, who misjudge situations so incredibly, you know, because they pay the ultimate price of, of having to live with that guilt. And so this is not about judging those types of mothers. I read terrible comments, you know, when these types of things happen against the mother. And of course, we're angry, you know, when we feel like a mother doesn't protect her child against a virtual stranger. But it's really talking about how low the mother feels inside, how unloved. And so I would say in general, if I had to like put Libra nar narcs in one camp or another, that I would say that they are more likely to be uh, covert narcs. So they are the victims of, uh, or they feel like victims. They go through life feeling like victims, but what happens when you feel like a victim? You're feeling sorry for yourself. Now, of course, if this person has a moon in Pisces or Cancer, a sign like that, they may be even more prone to self-pity and believing that this is just dropping out of the sky and they have no um, responsibility or ability to control the situation. So with covert narcs, there's a sense of learned helplessness where because of their trauma, they really have emerged as adults with a life view that life is happening to them. There's nothing they can do to change things. And they become magnets for perpetrators. And then guess what? Their worldview is solidified. And, you know, it's very... Um, problematic because especially with the uh, ch uh, parent-child relationship these people 
can adversely affect their children growing up. And then when the child is an adult, this person, as they get older and they might not be able to attract a partner as easily, they may be, you know, maybe they get involved in, in addiction because they're feeling upset that they can't have that kind of power over people with their beauty. And so their adult children may want to wash their hands of them because they are so, they did, they neglected them as children. And then as adults, they want their uh, full support and, and they have not changed. And we have to understand that narcissists, it's extremely difficult for them to change because it's, they're so splintered psychologically you know the shadow is the splinter that they cannot see who they really are they're very lost to themselves and so when you're lost to yourselves yourself you're going to project onto other people blame the the both the covert and the malignant narc are blamers to other people that's another red flag where somebody is always blaming you that they're not going to accept responsibility for their for their actions for their life and you have to you know or otherwise you will not change um these kinds of people um are not authentic libra narcs and they will be people pleasers to the nth degree they will tell you that they you know they will agree to do something that you want to do but then they are resentful about it and you can never really trust them because you really feel like um, they're just going, uh, going along to get along and you feel uncomfortable being around somebody like that. So like a friend who is um, kind of like passive aggressive. Yeah. So they, if they're going to express displeasure, it will be in a passive aggressive way. They're always afraid of not being nice. But, you know, passive aggression is not nice. It's very like, you know, kind of veiled, maybe sarcasm, maybe like dropping little hints here and there. It's not clear communication. It's not mature and it doesn't get their needs met. Um, so it, this can be a very kind of complicated type of narc. You, not, you, you may not realize that you're dealing with a narc until, <laughs> I was going to say until it's too late. But it's never too late. You can always find a way to uh, deal with them. So what, what can we um, say? Well, first of all, you may have to be the adult in the room. If you're dealing with a Libra um, parent who's a narcissist and you've grown up with this person and maybe they neglected you for their love affairs uh, when you were younger and they were just running from one person to the next and now that they're an adult now that you're an adult, they want you to take care of them because they were always relying on their beauty. Again, usually this is going to be women because of, of how our society, and you know, of course, in the past, sexism and, you know, f uh, oppression towards women did figure into this where women, um, were always, um, you know, made to, made to like, um, you know, have to find some way to, to, to make it in the world because they were, uh, you know, kept down this, it's a different age now. So I'm not talking about now. I'm not, I'm not buying it that, that women are oppressed in America. They might be in other countries, but not in America. I'm, I'm, I think young men are more oppressed than women. Sorry to say, but that's just my opinion. The point I'm making is that in prior generations and even prostitution, I'm always so surprised by how much vitriol people, even liberal people have about prostitution, when for women, that has been their one way to, to, to gain power um, monetar monetarily, especially when they had children and they had no way, they had no one to take care of it. I mean, my gosh, if you're a single parent and you don't have childcare, I'm not advocating for prostitution, but I don't look down on people that feel compelled to do that or who choose to do that. Um, I think that's a form of sexism. But the point is that th this 
you know, uh, getting by on your looks, using men for, um, you know, <laughs> what was called a meal ticket is something that some women still do because they don't feel that they have talent. They don't feel that they are intelligent. They may have been put down growing up. And this is kind of a defense. This is kind of a coping mechanism to get what they, what their needs met when they feel they can't do so otherwise. Um, so I don't, I don't fault them for that, but at some point you have to, um, heal yourself from those wounds from the past and you can't use a quick fix, like trying to get by on your looks. And eventually, you know, you get older and you're not as in high demand. And this is where these types of people fall apart because they, you see, you have to understand something about narcissists narcissists. They're really using other people. They don't have an emotional core. Um, and this is because they are so severely out of touch with their emotions. And so, um, they use other people like pawns and when they can't use them anymore, when too many people are onto them, or if they've lost that quality that makes them able to, to, to use others. For instance, for a woman, it'll usually be, um, their looks for a man. It can be their, um, their power, uh, their, you know, their, their money, their power. If they're, you know, quote unquote past their prime, of course, I don't believe that, but you know, that when they're like, not as prominent an individual or not as wealthy or, Maybe they've lost all their money and they're just starting from scratch. They have lost their narc powers. And then, you know what I mean? And they can't control anyone anymore because they don't have anything to control with. So how, where you come into this is that you have to um, be very observant of how people are trying to control you. If a parent is trying to control you, either through money or through the, the covert narc, through dependency, you have to be proactive and you have to say, uh, if let's say you have a parent and they've started drinking because they're depressed that they don't have their looks anymore and they're relying on you to pay their bills and things like that, you can say, well, you know, and if you have the money, you could say, I'm going to pay your bill, I'm going to pay your rent this month, but you're going to go into AA and I'm going to go to meetings with you because you know, you have, you have an alcohol problem and this is going to prevent you from being able to find work. You need to find, um, some viable work. I can help you find work, but I'm not going to enable you to continue doing what you're doing. So you have to be the adult in the room. Or if this is, um, a situation where a parent is trying to, you know, control you with money and maybe you need that money. Um, you know, you have to decide how destructive they are. Sometimes um, it's just annoying how they're behaving, but if they are truly putting you down, making you feel like trash, then I would seriously ask yourself how much that is worth for you. Is it really worth the money that they're giving you to feel like garbage inside because of their treatment? And I would say, it's never worth it. If that means you have to leave your two bedroom apartment and go into, or you might even have a house and, and, you know, rent a studio, it's worth it for your self-respect. So, um, anyway, I hope that, uh, <laughs> it turned out I had a lot more to say than I thought. So I hope that, uh, some of you have stayed to the end. Um, but in any case, uh, thanks for listening. If you'd like a personal reading, an astrological reading. Yeah, I do tarot readings as well. Check me out. The link is below. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.